Hello everybody, so I'm here with one uh, more video uh, related to the uh, topic of mass moment of inertia. Obviously mass moment of inertia is an important property uh, that we use in calculating dynamic forces um, and it's a uh, property related to the rotation of a rigid body. So uh, let me start with the uh, defining what mass moment of inertia is. So let's say if you have a small mass concentrated at uh, one point, and then you take a, a rope or a wire and of length uh, uh, r and attach to it, so the mass of this wire here is very negligible compared to what the mass that is concentrated here. So if you, you attach this wire to um, the mass, right? And then you take it and rotate it about some axis, right? The mass moment of inertia, which is denoted by I, I for inertia, is actually this distance is squared or the length of the rope is squared, R is squared times delta M. So that's the definition of mass moment of inertia for a concentrated mass. And look at the unit, unit is obvious. Unit of mass is kilograms. Unit of distance is meters, so kilogram meters squared. In the other system, you have to be careful, guys. Unit of mass is pound per, so you have to take the weight and divide it by gravity and then multiply it by feet squared. So it becomes a pound foot second squared, which is kind of awkward. Or pound per feet per second squared, and I was the weight divided by gravity actually is known as the slogs and then times feet is squared. So you see uh, much easier to use the metric system. Okay, so now the question is, well, that's the mass moment of inertia for a small concentrated mass. What about the mass moment of inertia of some rigid body with certain mass m? How do you find that? Let's say this rigid body is rotating about this axis. So all you have to do is to think of this rigid body as collection of a small masses, delta m1, delta m2, delta m3, right, at corresponding distances, r1, r2, and r3, and then go ahead and individually calculate the mass moment of inertia for each pieces, and then add them up. Or put it in the shorthand notation as a summation, as i goes from 1 to n, and you could have thousands of these uh, small masses. And you know, though, uh, as these... Uh, masses get smaller and this summation gets has more items in it, that actually becomes the integration. So actually the correct definition of mass moment of inertia is I equal the integral of R squared with respect to mass, okay? As the body rotates about this axis. Okay, so what's the physical meaning of mass moment of inertia? Uh, again, you gotta watch out guys, don't mix this mass moment of inertia with the area moment of inertia, which is also denoted by I. That is the I that we use for calculation of, say, the uh, bending stresses, the flexor formula, MC over I. We are not talking about this I. This is an I that has to do with dynamics and uh, rotation of uh, bodies. Okay, so what's the physical meaning of mass moment of inertia? Mass moment of inertia I is a measure of resistance of the body to rotational acceleration, okay? So that's the physical meaning. So obviously the larger the mass, the larger the mass moment of inertia, therefore there's more resistance to rotation. It's difficult to, you know, rotate it. Okay, and now uh, for a typical rigid body that is used a lot in our case is a slender rod, right? Slender rod means what? It means a very thin rod. In fact, the, uh, they are classified as if the, the ratio of the length to diameter is greater than or equal to 10, so at least 10, that's called a slender rod. Otherwise, it would be a cylinder like this. So you don't call this a slender rod, you, uh, rod, you call it a cylinder, okay? So big difference between a slender rod and cylinder. So if you have a slender rod, and let's say the center of gravity of this guy is G, it has a mass of M, and it has a length of L, right? So we have this x-axis here and this y-axis right through the center of mass, and then z-axis also 
along the axis of the uh, the slender rod. Uh, it could be shown by integration by this equation that i sub x. And by the way, whenever we have uh, the axis passing through the uh, the center of gravity, we use the bar notation, which signifies that this is a what we call centroidal mass moment of inertia. So because of symmetry, so it doesn't matter if we rotate this about x axis or rotate about y axis, right? Because of symmetry, the outcome is 112 ml squared. Where did we get this? It comes from the integration. It's not difficult to show that. In fact, if you just look in your textbook or any statics book even for that, you could see that. And then I with respect to z axis is zero because there is no mass distribution around that. So remember this, if you have, if you're rotating about this axis, right, there's no mass distribution. That R is almost zero. So that's why I sub Z is equal to zero. So over here, by the way, this is a table. There, there are tables, by the way, this is a little bit different with the choice of axis, but, and probably you cannot see this, but you could go uh, online or in your textbook, find the um, uh, mass moment of inertia for different bodies. So here we have a slender rod, a thin rectangular plate, a prism, a cylinder, a thin disc, uh, you know, a, a circular cone, and so on, a sphere, okay? And, or you could actually, in your textbook, I think it's in the back of the cover, uh, usually they put those tables. In any case, one important equation that you guys remember probably from your mechanics of material course uh, is the parallaxis equation which we use with for, you know, for unsymmetric cross-section. Here, the same equation is used to find moment of inertia if our axis has moved. So if instead of rotating about the centroidal axis, like what I showed you in the previous uh, page, right? We want to rotate about an axis here. So in other words, our pivot point is moved here about x prime axis or y prime axis. doesn't matter, actually. This is the parallel axis equation. It says, okay, no problem. You want to find i about an axis, just use i bar and then add to it md squared. D is the distance between the two axes. So for example, between x and x prime, the d is, as you could see, is half of the length, L over 2. So i about x prime axis is i bar, which is 112 ml squared, remember? That is for the centroidal axis. And then plus md L, L, L over 2 squared. So actually this becomes 112 plus 1 fourth, and 112 plus 1 fourth actually becomes 1 third. So we end up getting one third ml squared. Similarly, you could say I about y prime axis would be the same, one third ml squared. All right, let me show you a quick example and wrap this up. And then as I said, there would be about four videos at least that show you, shows you example of kinetics of rigid bodies. Okay, um, so here we just have two bars, two slender bars that are connected to one another, right? So one slender bar here, uh, you know, kind of pinned or welded or whatever you want, connected to one another. Both of them have the same length. So the length of this guy is L, as you could see. And this guy is the same L. But both of them have the same mass. So what if we take this guy and rotate it about the x-axis? So the pivot point is here, and we're rotating this about the axis as if this is coming out of the board, out of this um, picture, out of your monitor, and rotating toward you and around. Okay, what would be I sub x? So we break this basically into two uh, pieces, the vertical piece, the blue piece. I can color code it for you. And the yellow or orange piece here, right? And the x-axis is where it is. Now remember, in the previous page, we already know what should be i about with respect to this axis. It's one third ml squared. We use parallaxis equation to, to show you that. And now for this guy, for the horizontal piece, we use again parallaxis equation. Keep in mind that i with respect to the centroidal axis of this guy is zero. So if you use I sub X equal I bar plus MD squared, this I bar is zero, as you see, as you saw here, remember? 
this is the axis, right? And plus MD squared, what is D? D is L, right? The distance between this red axis and the X axis. All right, so we get ML squared. So just add them. It's like superposition. One third ML squared plus ML squared, the one third ML squared for the, this guy, and ML squared for this guy. Add them up and you get four third ML squared. Okay, uh, uh, so hopefully uh, by now you have a, you know, uh, more or less a good idea of what mass moment of inertia is and how it's going to be used. Very important in design, guys, in figuring out uh, actually the power you need to, ca to, to rotate a rigid body. You need the mass moment of inertia of that body in order to calculate the torque and then form the torque. Because remember that sum of the moment, which is the torque, is equal to I alpha. This is the torque. If you calculate the torque, based on the mass moment of inertia, then you can calculate the power. Remember, power is equal to torque times omega, and omega is the speed at which you want to rotate. Okay, thanks for watching and listening, and see you soon.